Did you sit here again? No. Are you sure? No. All right. Hey, Dan. What's up? Hi, Danny. AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicate Radio. Um, what type of defense did you have to play to compete in the SEC from what you've seen on film? You've got to be very physical. Obviously, in the SEC, the games are one in the trenches. I think we've already had that mindset, you know, since spring ball, since, you know, kind of as soon as the season ended. You know, we had to get bigger, faster, and stronger. I think up front, we've done a phenomenal job this offseason of doing everything we do to be able to compete at that level. Stay on the front row right here. You guys are almost all the way through summer workouts. Uh, how have they been going for you guys? Um, and you coming back after, you know, almost leaving for the NFL. How has your mentality changed from, in perspective from the previous year to this year as far as not so much a leadership standpoint, but more so just you personally? Mm-hmm. You know, obviously coming back, I knew there were some areas I needed to improve upon myself. I think you have every opportunity every single day to make the most of it. I think you, when you wake up, at, you know, you kind of have to know how you're going to get better. You have to have a plan. You have to know what you're going to do. And I think I've done, you know, myself and all the guys in the room and on the defense have done a phenomenal job of having the right mindset every single day. It's very easy in the summertime to kind of take a day off here and there, but we've had a very clear plan of action, and we have a vision. We know where we're going. We know our goals. We know our plans, and there's been very, very few times where someone's kind of slacked off or not reached the standard, and if there is, there's automatic correction from the leaders, and I think it's, I'm impressed with how big that group of guys has gotten, of guys that you can trust that are going to uphold the standard every single day, and I'm just proud of it because, you know, how it was when Coach V got here is not how it is, you know, to this day. And that's just something that I've dreamed of. Stay on the front row. Danny, in the big room, you talked about Jackson's leadership, how this morning he really vocal. Um, talk, think back to when you were young. When did that leadership really pick up for you as a young leader, at that trigger point for you? And it's really seemed to kick in for Jackson. Just Can you take me back to when you found that leadership mm-hmm. role as a young player? And is it nice to see that with Danny? Yeah, I mean, or Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, Jackson's kind of had a it, – it's difficult for him. You know, only playing one game last year and having all these expectations thrown onto him. But he's done an amazing job of, you know, filling that role and doing whatever what it takes. You know, for myself, you know, I look back to my sophomore year, kind of earning that starting spot, and it kind of took a while. You know, I thought that the guys on the defense, you know, kind of were, were leaders. I realized quickly that someone needed to step into that more vocal role. And I took it upon myself kind of around week eight, week nine, and said, all right, I might not be ready, but I need to get ready quick. You know, where I want to see myself, this is what it takes. And from that moment on, it's been every single day. You know, sometimes, you know, guys don't want to be there. And you see it right away. And you have to be the person who wakes them up, gets them going. And sometimes that person's myself. And I have to, you know, kind of understand, like, if I come to practice or come to a workout and I'm not, 110%. I'm not the one who's getting everyone clapping, get everyone with that energy. Then people are going to feed off that both ways. So if I'm not 110% or giving all my effort, then the freshmen looking up to me, Lewis Carter, Sammy Amasigo, are not going to be doing the same thing upholding the standard. And I think for myself, it's done an amazing job at getting better every single day. I think Jackson's starting to understand that, and he's starting to do everything he can to kind of be turned into that leader. Left side, second row. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. Uh, back during your recruitment, um, I know A&M was recruiting you. Mike Elko was the, the defensive coordinator at the time. Just what, what do you remember from, you know, he's now the head coach at A&M, mm-hmm. from Elko and, and his staff and, and kind of their you know, recruiting to you? Yeah, you know, looking back, I mean, you guys talked about it earlier and I thought about it. It was Santucci who kind of recruited me exclusively. He, he was the guy who was always talking to me, always in, in contact, so I didn't have many conversations w- with uh, the defensive coordinator. But, uh, you know, that, that program, it's, it's very – the tradition there is elite. You know, the 12th man, what they have going for them is – it's exciting. You know, I wish that we had the opportunity to go there and, you know, play them. Unfortunately, we don't. But, you know, it's, it's great to be in that same conference as them. Okay, third row. There you go. Britton Ross, you Knightley. You had mentioned earlier about how the leadership has really grown um, in the team. Is there anyone that's maybe been kind of a surprise leader this season and uh, maybe how they – uh, differ in their leadership style compared to maybe some of the other guys? Yeah, I mean, not really so much of a surprise, but Ethan Downs. That's someone, he's not the most vocal guy. You know, he's not someone who's always going to say, you know, kind of hype everyone up. But you look at how he treat, how he acts, what he does off the field, how he's, he's out there 30 minutes before helping a young guy with certain pass rush moves. You know, that's something that you don't see very often from a senior. You know, a lot, a lot of times the guys get very selfish. 
Ethan Downs is the most selfless dude on this team, and that's something that you look up to. You know, a lot of guys, it's contagious. When you see someone like that, you, it makes me want to, you know, if any of the young guys need help, I'm always, I want to be available like how he is to the, his, uh, his group of guys. Right side on the aisle. Grant Chapman Jones on side. Hey, you guys added Dominic Williams over the summer. How's he fitting in just with the group, and, and what kind of impact do you expect to him to bring this fall? Yeah, Dom, from the second he got on campus, he's a beast. You know, we had our kind of our conditioning training is like when he first stepped on there, and we didn't know where he was going to be at. You know, obviously in the portal, you can't work out with the team you were at before. And he came in there, and he dominated right away. You know, it's like, all right, there's going to be no fall off. There's going to take no time for it to get acclimated. He's, he's ready to go. He just, he's done a phenomenal job learning the system, you know, getting with Coach Bates as much as possible. And I think he's going to be extremely prepared for what we do. And for the SEC, he's what the type of guy that we need. Right here on the aisle, left side. Derek Peterson, Saturday Down South. Um, I, I've heard your coach say before that you, you guys aren't looking to prove people wrong this season. You're looking to prove yourselves right. Mm -hmm. Can you just speak to what that means to you and what that means to the defense? Yeah, when you look at our team, you know, we're not outside in. You know, everything starts from us. You know, we obviously under, we kind of block out that noise. We know when it's great, the noise are the best thing ever. You know, everyone loves what you're saying about you. As soon as adversity comes, you know, obviously those same people are quick to turn on you. I think you look at our team, you know, we know what we're capable of. And like he said before, we got to prove ourselves right. And that comes from every single day. It comes from every single workout. You have to prove yourself right. And then eventually you've seen so much growth, seen so much progress that it comes to fruition. Right side, back row. Uh, Jeff Howe, Horns 24-7. Danny, going back to the Texas game last year, Coach Venables talked about building this program off of toughness, playing with the physical edge. Uh, not just the year-over-year -year result, but the way you guys won the Texas game, forcing turnovers, had the big goal line stand. How, how much for you guys did that validate that you're headed in the right direction you know, with this program, building it in the way, the, kind of that mold Coach Venables wants to build it? Yeah, absolutely. When you look at a game like that, you, know, you get a sense of, like you said, validation. It's huge. You know, when you're able to perform on the biggest of stages, you know, come out there, especially after two years ago, what, what happened on that field, you know, it's painful. And you have to use that pain, use that anger, use how you felt that game as motivation. You know, and to this day, you know, we have a lot of guys that haven't experienced that. And so us older guys have to be able to give out that motivation, you know, to explain, look, it's not like that every single time. Winning's hard, especially where we're going, it's even more difficult. And so every single day, the leaders have to kind of, you know, do whatever they can to motivate and give that sense of understanding. Two final questions in the back over here, then right up front. Uh, Brig Bates, uh, KTE in, out of Texoma. Danny, uh, what does year three look like under, you know, the Brent Venable system regardless of the conference change? Yeah, so, you know, year one was learning it, you know, kind of getting the general understanding, finding, you know, what I need to do. Year two was kind of, you know, kind of more so understanding, you know, having a deeper, you know, deeper sense of confidence, finding myself. You know, year three has more so been teaching it. You know, having the young guys come in there, running meetings, you know, being a little mini defensive coordinator, you know, I, I want it to all go through me. I want to be the kind of the, the main gate. You know, everything that Coach Venable has taught me and Coach Alley as well, you know, he's been a great addition for myself. And it's just, it's helped me play, you know, faster than I ever have before. You know, having a sense of understanding, play with a sense of anticipation. So you're one step ahead of everyone else. Final question. The, the OU Texas rivalry is being in the SEC is new. How would you explain that to just a normal? SEC fan that kind of looks at it as just another game to a lot of people? I have a Longhorn tattooed on my body. It's <laughs> like it means that much to me. Like you go to bed thinking about like how big of a deal it is. You look at every single person in the state of Oklahoma, every single person in the state of Texas, and you know how much it means to them. You know, there's that's one game in the season that once a year that these two states can compete against each other in the biggest sport in the United States. And it's, it's going to go on. It went on long before me. It's going to go on long after me. I get a little piece of that shine to prove myself and to prove